One of the biggest challenges of building a full stack web application is managing complexity. If you're building a serious product, you likely have multiple front end applications that communicate with a back end, that share interfaces with multiple team members that need to collaborate efficiently. Today, we're going to look at NX from Narwhal, a tool that can dramatically simplify the way you organize, test, and share code between multiple JavaScript applications. If you're new to the channel, like and subscribe, and you can find the full tutorial on nx.dev. The tool itself is based on the best practices developed at Google to scale thousands of applications across thousands of developers in a single mono repo. But you don't need to be operating at Google scale to see the benefits of NX. It can be a very powerful tool for projects of all sizes, and not just Angular, but full stack JavaScript in general. So why do big companies like Google, Microsoft, and Facebook like to manage their code in mono repos? Or in other words, use a single Git repository to manage multiple apps and libraries? The simple answer is that this approach helps manage complexity by applying best practices organization-wide. This delivers consistency and predictability in your code, while also maximizing the ability to share code between projects. But you can't just put all of your code in a single repo and expect to reap the benefits. You need the right tooling in place to test, build, and deploy your apps at scale, and that's where NX comes in. Over the next 10 minutes, we'll look at how complexity can grow very quickly in a full stack project. We'll build two front-end applications, one with Angular and one with React, and then a shared backend with Nest. On top of that, we'll add multiple shared libraries that can be used by all three of these apps. Let's go ahead and create a new NX workspace to see how it can help us manage a project like this. From the command line, run npx create NX workspace, followed by your organization or product name. This will give us an empty workspace, and we'll be writing most of our code in the apps and libs directories. Right out of the gate, NX is going to help you separate your shared code from your application code. For example, you might have two front-end applications, one for your customers and one for your employees. Those apps would live in the apps directory, but they might share common UI elements that would go in the libs directory. So this works really well when you have a design system where you share common UI elements across multiple apps. But you might also have a backend app that gets deployed to a node server. And if you're using TypeScript, you'll likely want to share interfaces between your front end and back end code without having to duplicate and regenerate that code. Those interfaces can also live in the libs directory and be used reliably throughout a large application. Let's go ahead and imagine that we're building a product for a travel company. We have a team of Angular engineers who are assigned to building the front end customer facing app. We can opt into specific tooling for different frameworks like Angular, React, and Nest.js, so we'll go ahead and do that for Angular first. Our team of engineers want to use modern test tools like Cypress and Jest. NX gives you the option to just set those things up automatically without any configuration on your part. Now that our workspace is configured for Angular, Jest, and Cypress, we'll go ahead and generate a new app. That will create a new Angular app just like it would with the Angular CLI, but tailored specific to this workspace. You can find the app in the apps directory, along with a folder for end-to-end -end testing configured with Cypress. Now, up until this point, we've just been using the terminal to run these commands, but there's actually a better way to do this. If you're using NX, I highly recommend that you install the Angular Console VS Code plugin. The plugin allows you to easily navigate all the commands that you have at your disposal through NX. You don't need to memorize any commands or search through the docs, it's just all right here in your IDE. And this really helps manage complexity because you might have dozens of apps and libraries in a single mono repo. For example, if we only want to run the end-to-end -end test in our current booking app, we can do that by selecting the options we want and then clicking a button. And that will give us Cypress running end-to-end -end tests for this specific app. And from the same screen, we can also run our component unit test, which were set up with Jest. And another cool feature of the console is that it will save your commands in memory, so you can rerun them with the same options by simply clicking a button without having to think about it. Now, having this modern tooling is really nice, but the most powerful benefits of NX start to kick in as your app grows in complexity. At this point, we just have a single customer-facing Angular app, but let's imagine we have a separate team of developers who are working on an internal admin app for managing customer bookings. But this development team prefers to use React. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can use NX with any JavaScript project, but it also includes first-class support for React. We first need to opt into the React tooling by running ng-add narwhal react, and if we go back to the console, we'll now have access to schematics specifically for generating React applications and components. We'll go ahead and generate our admin React app just using the built-in defaults. And now we have a second application in the apps directory, along with its own end-to-end -end test suite. Now at this point, we have a mono repo with two individual applications in it. But one of the common misconceptions that you may have heard is that putting all of your code into a single mono repo will slow down your testing and deployment pipelines. In a large project, you only want to rebuild and test the portions of the app that have been affected by change. That might be an individual application, or it might be multiple applications that have been affected by a change to one of their shared dependencies. NX can detect where code changes will impact the monorepo, allowing you to efficiently work with change in isolation at any scale. 
If we look at the git master branch, you can see we have a clean working directory with no changes. Then if we go to the Angular console under dependency diagram, we can see both of our apps here, which are currently grayed out because there are no changes. But if we go and make a change to our React app, it will be automatically highlighted in red. And because NX knows which apps are affected by change in the current branch, we can test and build those in isolation. And this is what Narwhal means when they talk about developing like Google. Because a company like Google might have thousands of apps under a single monorepo, and the only way to operate them at scale is to understand what apps are affected by change. If you look at the commands under the Angular console, you'll see a bunch of them that are prefixed by affected. These commands allow teams to work simultaneously on several apps or libraries and be able to build and test them in isolation without having to worry about everything else that's going on in the mono repo. This is especially important when you start talking about code that might affect multiple apps. We can demonstrate that by generating a library with NX that will be used by both the Angular and React apps. We'll go ahead and call this our utilities library, and because I used the default schematic, it's just going to generate a vanilla TypeScript project. But you can generate framework-specific libraries as well. Now, another feature I want to point out before we go any further is that you have the option to add tags to your libraries. This part is completely optional, but tags allow you to control which types of apps can take this library as a dependency. For example, you might have a front-end shared library that touches the DOM that you wouldn't want to be used by a Node project. So if a backend developer tries to use this library as a dependency, they will get a linting error that will tell them it's a bad idea. Now, if you've ever created a shareable library, you know that there's a lot of steps involved. You need to set up your TypeScript config, your build scripts, and all of your testing utilities. But as you're about to see, NX makes this entire process completely trivial. At this point, we'll go into the source code for our utilities library, and I'll export a variable called unicorn rocket that contains some emoji characters because our design team said we need to show these characters on every single homepage of every app throughout the entire company. Now, the awesome thing about NX is that it makes code sharing dead simple. At the beginning of this video, we set up this workspace with an organization name, and we can now import all of our shared code from that namespace, starting with the at symbol. All of the configuration is done for us, so all we need to do is import the code that we want to use. We'll start by doing that in our Angular app, and then we'll switch over to React and do the same thing there. So now we have two front-end JavaScript apps sharing a common set of utilities. Now the really amazing thing is that NX will keep track of all of the apps that depend on the shared library. Let's just imagine that our design team comes to us and says that we need to add an additional emoji to this string. If we make that change on a clean Git branch and then go back to the dependency diagram, we can see exactly which apps are affected by the change. So even though we didn't actually change anything on the main front-end applications, they'll still be highlighted in red because they depend on that utilities library which did change. And it's also worth pointing out that there's an additional command provided by NX that will help you visualize the entire dependency graph with the affected libraries being outlined in red. Now at this point we've only been talking about front-end code, but NX can also handle server-side node projects with first-class support for Nest and Express. In this demo, we'll use nest, and the first thing we'll do is opt into the schematics. And then we'll go into the Angular console and find the command to generate a new nest application. We'll give the backend a name of API, and its responsibility is to fetch items from the database related to customer bookings. This adds another app to the apps directory, but this time without end-to-end -end testing because it's a backend project. Now, one of the most common things to share between your front-end and backend code are your TypeScript interfaces. In Nest, we'll want to read and write data in a backend database and make sure that that data has a specific shape with a TypeScript interface. But we'll also very likely want IntelliSense when we read that data and use it in our front-end applications. What I'm doing now is creating another NX library, and then I'm going to add a TypeScript interface to it called Reservation. By putting this code in a shared library, we can now use it in any one of our front-end or back-end apps. And on top of that, we can leverage the dependency graph to figure out exactly which apps depend on this data type. So if this interface ever changes, then you know exactly which apps to test, to build, and ultimately deploy to your production server. So there's a lot of obvious benefits to a tool like NX. Things like modern testing tools like Cypress and Jest, a dependency graph that will help you scale a monorepo to an infinitely large team, as well as task runners and code generators to keep your project organized. And the end result is a set of tools that will help you develop like Google, giving your organization a predictable way to collaborate and automate complex web applications at scale. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe, and make sure to check out the full tutorial on nx.dev. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.